Rise from your grave. Welcome to CRT Gaming episode number 6. Today we're going to be playing Castlevania Bloodlines on my Sega Genesis. And today's scan lines are brought to you by a RCA True Flat CRT TV. And uh, this RCA True Flat that I'm using today is actually a curbside pickup, a recent one last week. Uh, we saw an ad in um, Facebook Marketplace here locally and uh, they had this sitting sitting out on the curb and advertised it as free and working so we jumped in the car went over there and got it and brought it home uh, the uh, true flat crt tv looks great in my opinion and it actually has a vcr built into it <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that's a little bonus as well and uh, the vcr works the tv i think looks great um, hopefully that'll come off on this uh, recording, um, but to me it looks really good. And uh, it's a 19 inch, so it's a smaller TV uh, with that VCR um, combination added to it. So <laughs> uh, it's really cool, man. I have not seen near as many CRT curbside pickups this year as the past couple of years. And every one of my CRT TVs are actually free curbside pickups, so. Um, all right, so today we're gonna be playing my favorite Sega Genesis game, Castlevania Bloodlines. Um, this was called uh, Vampire Killer in Japan, and uh, Castlevania The New Generation in Australia and Europe. And they actually uh, censored out some of the blood and gore in the uh, European um, edition of the game and uh, the North American version did not get censored so that's cool yeah this is the only Castlevania game that was released uh, for the Sega Genesis and it came later in the Genesis lifespan so um, you know, I think a lot of people missed out on it. I did the first time around. And uh, later, you know, when I was uh, kind of picking up collecting again uh, for my Sega Genesis, um, I only had like a handful of games and I, you know, had it kind of just sitting in the closet. So once I started getting back into uh, retro gaming, I was seeing some reviews for this game and some really high praise. And after playing it, I know why. Uh, it is very cool and it is its own unique experience you cannot have this experience on well you couldn't back in the day anyway on any other uh, system other than the Sega Genesis so it was really cool for us uh, Sega Genesis owners to have a unique experience like this and have a Castlevania game finally on the Sega Genesis uh, man it's a good game and uh, the good news is nowadays uh, you can actually get uh, Bloodlines for fairly cheap. Uh, it's on the Castlevania Anniversary Edition that's available for download on all the last generation consoles. Anyway, I have it on my uh, PS4 and Bloodlines is included in that. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's awesome. It was also included, uh, is included, on the Sega Genesis Mini which was a big surprise for me. That's really cool. Um, it is a high-priced game, one of those mid, mid to high tier, I'd say it's probably high tier uh, game, especially if you're going for complete in box. And uh, for the longest time I had a high quality repro of this game when I got it the first time. I wanted to make sure I liked it, and, you know, so. Uh, but just recently I actually was able to replace that repro with an authentic cart and uh, I got a very good deal on it because it had some writing on the label <laughs> and they had a best offer um, on eBay so I went ahead and submitted a $50 offer and that's a really really good price for an authentic uh, Castlevania Bloodlines and the uh, seller to my surprise actually accepted 
that first offer. So um, you could tell they were pretty impatient on trying to sell the game. I think that they probably could have got, I would say, at least $70 out of it. Even with the faint writing that's on the uh, label, and the label isn't in bad shape. There's wear and tear on it, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, and, and I know that uh, there's been some uh, viewers that have commented in the past on some of the my videos, and I agree 100%. You can get uh, some of these high price games at a discount rate just because maybe the label is tore or maybe it doesn't even have the label on it anymore. Um, you know, and you can get it at a greatly reduced price and, uh, you know, if that's not important to you. Now, um, to a lot of people that is important. So, man, I love this. This part, that climbing up that I just went through, that is my, one of my favorite parts of this game. Um, to me, that moon just looks amazing back in the background there. Um, yeah, it's th this game is a highly polished, excellent Castlevania game, and it has Sega Genesis Attitude written all over it. So, on this guy, I try to get behind this ledge here, and I just uh, try to use my sub-weapons as much as I can to kind of uh, take his life down. And then, when he jumps on you like that, mm, that hurts. But, look how far, how close he is to death. And, uh, yeah, I've got him right where I want him. There you go. And I absolutely love the sound uh, on this game when you finish a level and beat a boss. So, check it out. Man, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> Here's your password, man. If you need one to get past this part. <laughs> and I really do like the map screen, too, man. I mean, everything on this game is very unique. The, just the sound, the music, uh, the graphics, everything just kind of screams Sega Genesis. Uh, I love the pixel artwork. It's just, it's great. And now... You know, you can see the effect uh, down there. You can see his reflection uh, in the water. I mean, that's a pretty cool effect for a 16-bit system. Um, just awesome. And on this level, man, you got to really kind of watch out because they will come uh, flying at you before you know it. And they, the knockback can knock you off. I almost showed you right there. Uh, and this can be a difficult game, especially your first, you know, four or five times trying to play it, it can be a little difficult. You will uh, eventually memorize where all the enemies are and how to navigate, uh, you know, take the least amount of damage anyway. That water can kill you in a heartbeat though. You really got to watch the knockback on this level because uh, just because of that reason, the water can kill you. And I'm going to go for the one up here. Yeah, it took some damage. Got a little greedy, but I wanted that one up. You just don't want that water to go over your head because it does start draining your life in a hurry. These minotaurs can be a pain sometimes. I love them though. So, uh, a couple of things about Eric. He can use his spear, he can do a high jump to reach places, um, and it's completely a different experience if you pick Eric. Uh, just really completely different. Um, there are branching paths that each character can take that the other character cannot reach. So, you'll see different parts and different levels depending on which character you pick, and to me that's just very cool. I always use Eric and I need to branch out and, uh, you know, try to switch, them, switch it up a little bit, but, uh, 
I'm really used to Eric. Now this guy, I always let him hit the, the ground with his mace first. And uh, that kind of gives you an idea where that bubble is. So you, if you get right in between the, where the mace is going to hit on the ground and the boss, it's a bit easier. And on this guy, you just want to really time your jump and attack right after that axe is swung. And you got to do it just at the right time or he will uh, catch you with that axe. It's got a lot of range on it. I'm doing well because my spear is completely powered up. You can see the blue flames on it. So it does more damage right now. And it's just like any Castlevania game with the whip where you power it up. You know, you can reach farther. The spear, I don't think he adds any range, but it does add damage the, if you get it completely powered up. And you get the book. That also provide you with a uh, special attack as well if you get so you see where the sub weapon the axe is up there man this, this area is rough but anyway if you have uh, the special power icon up there when you go ahead and hit your C button and up it delivers a powerful attack uh, that hits all enemies on screen Man, I just, once you get off kilter on this part, it just uh, <laughs> it can eat you up. <laughs> and I try not to get greedy because the main thing is just to hit those Medusa heads. And uh, they're really not as bad as other Medusa heads in other Castlevania games. So I did not get through that unscathed. That's okay. Got four lives so this part is really cool man the statue just some of the effects and uh, I don't know man just you can tell that they put a lot of passion in this game so you're seeing a lot of the Castlevania formula and this guy's rough Ugh. okay that's all right man we're not gonna let that change the momentum here but you can see a lot of the Castlevania formula in this game um, but just the look of things and just you know some of the effects was really amazing for the time and to be done on a Sega Genesis is, is really a cool cool experience man I need to do a little better on multitasking right now, but um, that's all right. I would like to finish this level at least. I don't want to have a really long episode. I say that probably every time, but uh, you know, I don't want it to take a bunch of time to, to watch. I want it to be something that's fun and easy to watch, and I want it to be around the 15-minute mark. get your meat out of the wall man those walls are uh, I don't know and how would that meat taste after your I mean you know it's been sitting in a wall for years so, and it doesn't seem too appealing <laughs> yeah, get my timing down here with my holy water it'll take care of that guy and I think this is the one yeah it is this one will keep that um, platform just keeps sinking so you gotta just uh, get on that platform and keep going man all right didn't get through unscathed but it's all good now we got charging minotaurs below us but at least we don't have to worry about that water line <laughs> They give you one go in one direction and two go in the other direction, so... Ugh. And the boss for this level, you really do want to have as much life and ammo as possible. So, we'll see how this goes. I, I should be able to beat him. It's not an incredibly hard boss fight, but, I mean, it, he can do some damage to you. 
What you want to do is you want to remove the lower level because you cannot reach his head at this point. You've got to behead him to beat him. So you got to just keep, uh, you know, hammering at that the lower levels there of his uh, torso, and uh, during that time um, he can jump and shake the ground and make rocks fly at you. He can pop you off the ground. It's really good if you can time your jump. You know, if he jumps, you want to time your jump to where you can kind of avoid that uh, when he lands, uh, shaking of the screen and so forth. Now this boss, um, Golem, he can be tough. And the only way to damage him is to hit him in the head. So, uh, if you have a lot of ammo and you didn't take a, a death like I did before you get to him makes it a much easier fight but that's all good we're gonna, we're gonna try to get him this time there's the jump mm. and you get in that corner and there's sometimes you're just you're gonna take damage no matter what you do Come on. almost there ah. <laughs> yeah all right, well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this, and um, yeah, I hope you have a great and safe rest of your day.